Thank you for the introduction. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, homotopy theory, if I'm fine. So what is homotopy theory? So homotopy theory, it's the study of homotopy types. So you can think of them <coughs> as spaces up to hom homotopy. So you can say it's topological spaces, for instance, up to weak homotopy equivalences. Uh, if you don't like arbitrary topological spaces, you can restrict <coughs> yourself to CW complexes up to homotopy equivalences. Or you can also talk about uh, simplicial sets up to uh, weak equivalences. And so already here, there is something a bit strange in that topological spaces and simplicial sets, uh, there are two very different structures. But when you look at them up to some notion of weak equivalences, they become kind of the same thing. And homotopy theory is the study of that same thing, which can be represented by, by both. And so there is a, a formal system introduced by Vladimir Voivodsky, the Univen Foundations. So th there are a lot of ways to see the Univen Foundation, but one way is to see that. So it's a system where the basic objects behave just like homotopy types. So in particular, there is a precise formulation there is a model of the univalent foundations in the, in the simplicial set. So you can interpret those basic objects as homotopy types. And so something really important is that in univalent foundations, you cannot distinguish between equivalent types. So I will make that clear very soon. So it leads us to the notion of invariant homotopy theory. So invariant homotopy theory, it's the study of those basic objects of the Euler valence foundations, but with the intuition coming from homotopy theory. So basically, we're doing homotopy theory. So let me point out, so it's not topology. We're not doing topological spaces. We're not doing simplicial sets either. What we're doing is something which looks like the direct study of homotopy types. And in particular, the main difference with uh, in uh, with homotopy done with, say, topological spaces, in that in, in this theory, everything uh, you can define is always homotopy invariant. So everything you do will always be invariant under homotopy equivalences. So you can just see that as homotopy theory, where you are not allowed to do something which is not invariant under homotopy equivalences. So that's quite a big restriction to do only thing and invariant under homotopy equivalences. So let's see a few things that do not work. So for instance, there is no notion of subspace. You cannot really talk about a subspace up to homotopy. In particular, you cannot say, for instance, take the complement of a point. Because say, if you take a complement of the point of the real line, it gives you something completely different from the complement of a point in R2. And R and R2 are homotopy equivalent. So this kind of thing you cannot do. Now, if you have a map f from E to B, you cannot really talk about it being a vibration because we know from homotopy theory that every map is homotopic to a vibration. And we cannot distinguish between homotopic things. So everything is a vibration, so it's not really in inter interesting. For instance, if you take the universal cover of the circle, so it's mapped from R to F1, well, it's homotopic to a constant map. So really, you, you cannot do much about it uh, in, in this theory. So I will talk more about vibration later uh, because th they do turn out to be quite important, but when we see them as a different thing. Um, quotients, they also often just do not work. Let's say projective spaces. The usual definition is you take the n sphere and you identify every point with the antipodal point. Well, the thing is, if n is odd, the antipodal map is homotopic to the identity map. So if there was such a notion of quotient, it would have to preserve this homotopy. And so it would have to be the same thing as identifying every point with itself on the sphere. And that's clearly not going to give projective spaces. Similarly, a lot of things like matrix group, if you want to define SON, well, it's a subspace of the set of all matrices, which is itself contractible. Well, it's just not going to work the way we are used to do. Uh, equality, it's also quite, uh, quite tricky to work with equality because if you have two points which are equal, you can just move them around, they are not equal anymore. And so you have to do something to, to make equality work somehow. And finally, 
Um, so that, that's kind of optional, but usually we take it because it has a lot of nice consequences. We're working in intuitionistic logic, so we don't have excluded middle and we don't have the axiom of choice. Okay, so what do we, ha we have? For now we don't have much, but <laughs> we do have things. <laughs> <laughs> so we have function spaces. So when I say space, I mean this, uh, this notion of uh, abstract homotopy time. So if you have two spaces, you can form the space of all continuous function between them. That's perfectly uh, uh, correct up to homotopy, and so we have it. We have the notion of path spaces. So if you have a space and you have two points in it, you can consider the space of all paths from one point to the other. So uh, not that this is uh, this notion of fast, it's a primitive notion of the theory. It has nothing to do with the real interval or anything like that. We really put the notion of fast as a primitive notion in the, in the theory. So we have homotopy limits and homotopy colimits. So as you probably know, limits and colimits in topological spaces, they are not very well behaved, in particular because they are not invariant under homotopy but there is a homotopy version of limits and colimits, which is invariant under homotopy, and we have most of them here. So in particular, this gives us a lot of cell complexes, so you can define, for instance, Sn uh, as a iterated suspension function. Uh, you can also define the projective space in this way, so it's a bit more difficult, uh, because you have to do it by induction and then each to define uh, rp n, pl n plus 1, you know, the attaching map depends on rp n, so you have to do it, but it works. So we have something called truncations. So this is uh, usually known uh, in uh, algebraic topology when you say, okay, I have this space, I want to kill all homotopy groups uh, starting at dimension n. And uh, it, it turns out that here there is a very natural way to say it, and it has very nice properties, so we use it quite often. So this is uh, how we define, for instance, the fundamental groups, because for that we need to, to take a set of connected components, which is a truncation. And we can also define the Islander maclean spaces using this truncation. And finally, uh, we have universes. So the idea of a universe is that it's the space of all spaces. So of course there are, uh, there are size issues. You have to say the big space of all small spaces. So it, it cannot be an element of, it of itself. But I mean that, that's kind of an orthogonal issue. The idea is that we have a space containing all spaces. And that's about it. We don't have much more than that. So let's see some, some example w what we can do with. So we'll first talk about uh, vibration. So we always we saw that the notion of vibration as a map from the total space to the base space is just not going to work. But uh, there is a different intuition for a vibration, which is that a vibration is a family of spaces parameterized by another space. And there is a very natural way to do that here. If you have a base space B, a vibration over B, it's just a map from the base space B to the universe. So this U is the universe, it's the space of all spaces. So you can just see this map as the map sending any point of B to the fiber over B. And it turns out to have all the, the right properties of vibration and to do everything we want. So in particular, if B is defined as some kind of cell complex or like homotopy limit, in order to define a map from B to U, uh, th there is a canonical way to do that by essentially giving the images in U of all the cells in some precise sense. And in particular, so for the point, we have to give elements of U, so types, like spaces, and for the lines, we need to give paths in the universe. And this is where we need uh, Voivodsky's univalent axiom, which says essentially that a path in the universe so the universe is like the space of all spaces. So a path in the universe is a path between two spaces. 
and it's the same thing as a homotopy equivalent between its endpoints. So let's see now a very concrete example. So how do we do the universal cover of the circle? So first we need to define the circle. So the circle, we define it this way. So it's essentially a cell complex where you say you have one point, which we call base, and then we have one loop, which is a path from base to base. So th there is a way to make that very precise and you, you get something that looks like that intuitively. And so now we want to define the universal cover. So we need to define a map from S1 to the universe. And to that, it's, uh, we have to do it on the base point and on the loop. So basically we have to give the fiber over the base point. So that's easy, that's the integers. And then we have to give, to explain what happens around the loop. And uh, what we have to give here, it's uh, an equivalent between uh, the integers and the integers. And so here, because we want this helix, we take the function which uh, to n gives n plus one. And this is where we need the univalence axiom to, to make everything work. So this is uh, essentially, this gives the, the complete definition of this, uh, this fibration. And once you have that, you can uh, look at the total space of that fibration. You can prove that the total space is contractible and you can, for instance, use the long exact sequence of homotopy groups that you can, you, you can define as well. And you get that pi one of S1 with Z. Yes, somehow, the, the thing is, we are kind of living in a different world where w we cannot really talk about the, the previous notions. I mean, intuitively, it's the same thing. It's not, it, it doesn't have exactly the same properties, but it, I mean, you can think of it as really the, the same thing. And uh, so, in particular, in the, in the simplicial set model given by Vladimir, of uh, this kind of vibrations are sent to count vibrations between count complexes. So you get the same kind of vibration. Okay, so we get pi one of S1 is Z. Okay, so that's good, but can we do more than that? So here is most of what has been done so far here. So uh, let me talk in particular about that. So that's what I've done in my PhD thesis last year. So pi four of S3 is Z mod two. So uh, that requires uh, quite a lot of uh, ingredients. So, so I, I managed to do that using all this kind of uh, invariant homotopy theory and it requires quite a lot of ingredients. So for instance, it requires this universal co cover of S1 that I just saw. It was done by Mike Solman uh, uh, five years ago. Uh, I also need the hot vibration so the hop vibration, uh, the usual definition, it uses like complex numbers and some formula on complex numbers. Here, I don't have complex numbers. Uh, there are no formulas. Well, you have to do it in a different way, but using the same kind of ideas, you can do it. Then I need to use the James construction. There's also the blackers massy theorem, which is, uh, it's kind of a homotopy excision theorem, if you've heard about that. It's a generalization of the Freudenthal suspension theorem. It's quite important theorem in homotopy theory. I also need cohomology. So again, cohomology, the usual definition, you do things like you use the set of singular simplices of a space. And the set of singular simplices of a space is just not invariant in the homotopy equivalences. So here you have to define cohomology in a different way. So typically you define cohomology using island bear maclean spaces, which, which is uh, homotopy invariant. And then you need the hop invariant and some version of the term isomorphism. And there are various other things like a result about covering spaces, the cipher van Campen theorem and the quaternionic hop vibration for the one, one dimension fiber. So that's uh, most of what is known uh, so far in this invariant homotopy theory. So uh, before finishing, I'd like to uh, say a few more things about one feature 
of invariant homotopy theory, which is constructivity. So univalent foundation is based on Martin-Lust type theory, which has uh, the very nice property of being constructive. So that means every time you prove that there exists a natural number having some property, from the proof you get an algorithm to compute that number. And univalent foundation, it's still constructive, uh, even though this is kind of work in progress and much less understood. So there is a prototype implementation, there are some things missing and there are some things where it's not completely sure, but it, it should be constructive. And this is not just like something theoretical, it actually could be useful for algebraic topology in that, for instance, that proved that pi 4 of S3 is Z mod 2. Actually, I first proved that there exists a natural number n such that pi 4 of S3 is Z mod n. And at that time, we didn't know how to actually compute this n, uh, how to prove that it's n. And then I proved that n is equal to 2, but the proof was quite involved. And with the constructivity property, it should be enough to just have the first element to actually compute the n. And so to conclude uh, in the things I would like to do, so uh, something I didn't mention is that this univalent foundation, one uh, good thing about it is that you can use it to formalize proof in a computer and to have your computer check that the proof is correct. Uh, but I didn't do it yet for by 4 of S3 is Z mod 2, so I would like to do that. Also, I'd like to understand better this constructivity properties and actually compute this N instead of proving it's equal to two, try to really see if the compu computation goes through. Uh, and then, uh, of course, there are a lot of things still to do uh, in homotopy theory. So there are a lot of things like bot periodicity or K theory, spectral sequences that we don't know yet how to do uh, in invariant homotopy theory, but hopefully it should be possible to do. So, so I would like to continue working on that. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much.